How long have you been stuck in the early game of BSS for? A week? A month? Or even like a year? Well, this guide aims to help you move from the boring early game stage into the significantly more interesting mid to late game stages. But even if you are not in the early game anymore, I can assure you that this guide will have some tips that will still apply to you. Before I begin, I just want to clarify what I will be considering early game. In the opinion of many high level players, early game is anything before Supreme Stone. This means I'll be covering some crucial tips that are essential to know in the stages before you get your Supreme Stone and move into the mid game. Some basic information you should know before you start is that gifted bees give five bonuses. These high bonuses will not stat, which means you should not have multiples of gifted bees unless instructed to by like a higher building guide. So, tip number one. Quests. Grinding the correct quests. Some quests are more important than others due to the rewards they give you. Before you achieve 35 bees on the last area currently in the game, you should be prioritizing black bear quests. This does not mean you shouldn't do your other quests like science bear, etc. as these are also important. Just have quests going on in the background. After you get 35 bees, you want to focus on spirit bears quest flow, since the spirit petals are very useful. It is important to note that you technically only need to do 20 out of 30 quests. Continue to do the other quests in the background while you are doing these. Tip number 2. Pet order. The order in which you use the spirit petals you obtain from the spirit bear quest line is important, as it will most likely influence how fast you progress. It is generally agreed upon that the optimal order in the current meta is to first get the petal belt, then donate your second petal to the wind shrine so you can start to get windy bear. After this, you can choose to get your third petal for the petal wand, but this is a considered an optional upgrade. I would recommend that you purchase it however. Tip number 3. Materials. We all want to use that diamond deck on our highest to guarantee legendary bear. But, before you do that, you should know it's better to save certain materials instead of using them when you get them. A good example of this is diamond eggs. We need 5 later on in the game to craft the diamond ones. If you use all of them on your heart to get a legendary bead that is likely to be useless to you anyway, you'll make a much more difficult grind for yourself later on. Most materials should not be used for anything apart from crafting the early game, as you most likely do not know how to boost them correctly, meaning you'll probably just end up wasting valuable material. Tip 4. Do not rush into picking a hive colour before it's say. Basically your only option for a hive is mixed. Being mixed hive will help you be able to do quests much more easily. There is one exception to this though. If you can get every non-repeatable quest line, so that would be like Black Bear, Sparrow Bear, Science Bear, um, that's better really. If you can get all of those done before you get your Supreme Star Amulet, there is an option to go early blue to make lots of honey while you are grinding towards getting the last few gifted bee types for your Supreme Star Amulet. Tip number five, don't waste your honey. There will be a progression chart on screen starting from when you have porcelain gear, Even before this stage, you can waste honey. The thing that you should not buy is the spark staff. There's a way better idea to just go straight from the gone away to the porcelain tip because the spark staff is just terrible. You should never buy the spark staff. Especially in early game. Tip number six, gifting order. Tickets are a valuable resource in bee swarm simulator. They are used to buy useful things such as event bees, the cub buddy, star treats, and gold bees. In the early game, it is not worth it to buy gold eggs or the cup bait, as the event bees will be a much better investment. For the event bees you, sh you should buy, you should buy Tabby Bee first. This has an OP permanent buff called Tabby Love that takes a while to build up. But, when, yeah, but once you build it up, it's very overpowered. You should put this bee in one of the two bottom middle rows of your hive for maximum efficiency. So I'll just go show those now. Ideally, put Tabby Bee in one of these two slots this one or that one because that it converts the most in the game, so it's closest to you when you're converting, then you'll convert a little bit faster. Next, you should be looking at the Photon Bee, as it has a good ability for collecting pollen early game. After that, you should be working on getting the Cobalt and Crimson Bee Duo. These will, be, these will both be useful since you will still have them next time. You should then get Festive Bee festive for so the Festive Gift ability. And finally, but only if you can also afford to gift it, you can add Puff Bee to your hive for the extra bond leveling your bees. The order to gift these bees refers to the chart I'm currently going to show on the screen. Oh, tip number seven, hive. Some common mistakes new players make are with their hives. Some players bleach their hives. This is when a player tries to make as many bees in their hive legendary as possible, or 
which is quite common early game. This will make you less honey than if you had a good mixed hive with a variety of different gifted bees. But what is a good mixed hive? Well that depends, if you haven't wasted your star eggs on bees, you should be tempted to get one of every gifted bee type in your hive so you can get a guaranteed mythic bee from, gifted mythic bee from your star eggs. If you've used all your star eggs, you should look at a mixed hive composition relevant to the other hive slots you have on. I'll leave a couple videos that showcase different mixed hive compositions for different amount of hive slots unlocked in the description below. Tip number 8. A daily routine. If you want to op if you want to progress optimally, then having a daily routine is a good idea. This is so you can hoard materials for later in your progression. Some good things to include in this routine are killing your werewolf with spider, killing tunnel bear and king beetle, memory matches, daily dispensers, especially glue, because you'll need lots of that later, and mythic meteor shells. If you cannot do these things yet, it is fun. E.g. if you cannot kill killer tunnel bear, just skip it and wait until you can kill it to add it to your routine. Mythic meteors require three methods to skip, which may be hard for early game players to do, so don't worry too much about them. No, if you have Robux, this is the order you should spend them on the game pass in the game. So if you have Robux to spend, there's a definite order what you should spend them. BAB is the most important game pass to buy, and even if you don't normally spend money on games, as long as you'll play long term, BAB is essential. After you purchase BAB, you should get the 2 times convert rate game pass, as converting is something you will spend a lot of time doing. After this, you can choose to buy either the Cub Buddy or the 2 times B Game Apollo Game Pass. Now, neither of which are very worth buying. So you can get the Cub Buddy for free and 2 times B Game Apollo is not Buying honey, tickets, or eggs is not worth the Robux, so do not buy these. Especially, like, all of this, all of the stuff in here is not really worth the Robux. Tip number 10 codes. You should not just use all the codes whenever you can. It's a good idea to save the codes that give you buffs, like Honey Day or Wins, for later in your Bee Swarm Simulator career, when you will get much more value from the code. Codes that give Honey materials are good to use in your early game, since they will probably give more of a boost in the early game than they will later on. I will leave a link in the description to the wiki page that shows all the current codes you can use in Bee Swarm. Bonus tip, Macroing. Macroing is allowed in Bee Swarm Simulator by the developer. Macron is when you get a computer program to play the game for you. This allows you to make a large amount of honey and materials effortlessly. Macron is essential if you want to get on the all-time honey leaderboard. But if your goal is to get the end game, it is possible to do so without using a macro. However, the end game can take upwards of 2400 hours or 100 days of playtime. Yeah, so a macro is normally going to save you a lot of time. If you want to know how you can set up your own macro, I'll leave a tutorial in the description of this video. It's important to note that this is PC only, and I believe it only works on Windows devices. Conclusion I hope these tips help you with your journey to the big wide world of Bee Swarm Simulator. I was not able to cover everything in this video, so I suggest you either join the Bee Swarm Guide Help Discord server in the description, or to join my Discord server to get help from me personally. Another thing to keep in mind is that Bee Swarm Simulator is a game, and at the end of the day, as long as you're having fun playing the game, that's all that matters. These tips will help you progress much faster if that's what you find enjoyable though. Thanks for watching these 10 tips for early gamers and be on the lookout for the next guide for the game I'm going to release soon. Make sure to like and subscribe because these help you since it really helps a lot keeping me motivated to continue making content.